I'm here with Billy Cox, who is General Manager, Service Assurance Management with Intel Corporation, a diamond sponsor at Pulse 2014. Welcome, Billy. Thank you. We're glad to be here. Thanks for making time for this. And I want to I want you to tell us about your role. I mean, I read that title, General Manager Service Assurance Management. It sounds like you, you're just responsible for making sure everything works, right? Well, you know, it turns out we've got a lot of capabilities in the platform to let you host a workload and guarantee its performance, but nobody uses that stuff today. And a lot of it's because we really haven't had to go do that in the past. We really worried about things like, let's make it work. Well, now we're entering an age where I can got it virtualized, but you know what? I'm bringing workloads in that I really want some confidence that they're actually going to perform the way we want. And so I've learned how to use the hardware to go do that. So is it about make it happen? Yeah, it is. It really is. Get focused on the big problem, but go address it using the hardware. Could you tell us a little something about your background and how it's kind of coalesced to bring you to this point at Intel? Yeah, I started off as a hardware guy, right? So one of those guys who built circuit boards, I've probably done 200 circuits over the years, I've done five chips, and now I end up at Intel um, through HP, where I developed the uh, systems management software business there at HP. And when I, I realized the market's changing and we're headed towards uh, extreme simplification, and it was difficult in the market HP was in at the time to make the transition. I think it'd be easier now, frankly, but at the time it was very difficult. And Intel really wanted to get serious about looking at the new ways to do systems management. So it made a huge fit to move into Intel, into Intel where I can now influence the whole industry. And it's challenging. Intel's a very interesting place to work. I love working there, uh, but that's what drove me into Intel. Wonderful, now you, you mentioned the word challenging, and I'm, the next question is, what in your mind are the biggest issues that impact cloud adoption? I mean, that's a big topic here. What do you think about that? So I, I think it is challenging to adopt cloud. What I hear, so I, we're, we're doing service assurance management in one of my businesses, but what I hear from customers is that's their number two or three problem. The number one problem is they have to organizationally decide they want to go build a cloud. And it's easy to say, but there has to be business pressure to go do something different. And some businesses have that, have that challenge and other businesses don't. Um, but when they do, they get serious about making the change. And then the second problem kicks in, which is how do you retrain your people to think cloud? They've been used to thinking, I'm a storage guy. I only worry about storage. Well, suddenly you've got to say, wait, wait, storage is actually on demand. It's got to, but I still have to meet the IT requirements. And then once they get through those, then they say, wait, how do I be efficient? How do I guarantee performance? How do I meet SLAs? Uh, so I think the biggest one right now, frankly, is how, why do I want to go spend the time and, and money in IT to go make this transition? It's not cheap. It's, it's, it's painful to go do. So there's technical challenges and, and almost so, sort of business cultural challenges then, right? Yeah, and I think for most companies, the business cultural. Intel IT is probably one of the unique ones that they, uh, they did some math uh, about three years ago and realized that there was no way with the current environment they were going to be able to support the, the expected growth in Intel IT. And so they started building out a, a, a private clouds based upon OpenStack, really starting about a year and a half ago. So they got way ahead of the curve and really taught a lot of us what it means to go through that cultural change uh, in, in terms of the pain, the retraining. You know, Intel IT does active retraining of teams. I mean, they set out these programs before teams even knew they needed to be retrained and started driving people through it. So I think that's an example of being proactive. I think a lot of companies are still a little bit behind the curve trying to figure out what it means. But what happens, we find, is once they do get down that, then they come back to Intel and I go, so oh, great, now I've done it. How do I get better at this? How do I, how do I improve my efficiency? Well, you know, if we broaden it out and we think about other hurdles that you face at Intel as a technology provider, I mean, are there, that's one. Are there other big ones that are on the tip of your thought right now? So Intel is a silicon company at its heart. We manufacture, we develop the technology to go into manufacturing, we develop the chips. And so as a company, by and large, uh, they focus on those aspects. But what that means is there's some incredibly sharp people building some amazing capabilities in the silicon. But what we've just recently, over the last five years, begun to hire is people who understand how to connect that to the end user solution problem. And so one of the challenges we have in the high tech industry is I have, I, I have yet another widget and no user cares, <laughs> right? So what, what we do in the, and OpenStack gave us a fantastic opportunity to say, the end user's problem is about compliance. We have some security capabilities in the hardware that I can use to go meet that compliance requirement. So one of the biggest challenges for internal to the high tech world is how to connect the user problem to the high tech we have. Okay, what about trends that you have your eye on right now? So there's a few things. The, the infrastructure as a service is frankly just emerging into most enterprise IT guys' thought trains. The one right behind it is platform as a service. 
And there's immense opportunities in the, in the platform as a service, Cloud Foundry being an example of one of those uh, that we keep our eye on, because if you want to, most developers would rather not worry about the virtual machine their code lands in, that's not their first problem, their first is writing the code. And to the extent we can bury into the platform as a service layers, the knowledge of how to use the platform efficiency. For example, we have acceleration encryption instructions in the hardware. Well, the developer doesn't want to go make sure he's got the right library, but we can make sure it's already in the platform as a service layers for him. So that's one of the big trends that I keep an eye on. The other one is networking, and uh, we we often all hear about it as uh, you know open networking or uh, you know SDN those type techs. But what's really interesting to me is we can change the economics, we can change the ability to implement quality of service uh, with the new tech, new networking capabilities. So that's going to be a big one. That's going to be disruptive because you have to approach the problem differently. But it's an immensely powerful option. If we project ahead, sort of as a closing question here, project ahead to this time next year. Are we going to be talking about those very things and how f much farther they've come or, or something different, you think? So there's a, uh, there's a book by a guy named author, last name Hamilton, who talks about something called hyper-revolution. And fundamentally what it is, is after you've been through history once, when that history begins to repeat, you don't wait for it to happen, you just jump to the end game. And then you repeat the cycle, and, and so you, you end up in this hyper-revolution. And we're watching OpenStack go through that now. As we start a new project in OpenStack, it either gets uh, critical mass within, let's say, a few weeks or a dozen, and it dies. Uh, and, and we're seeing that now in Cloud Foundry, we're seeing it in, in a lot of other communities. So I think when we're here next year, we're going to see two things. We, we could not possibly predict today where OpenStack will be a year from now. The hyper-evolution makes that almost impossible. If you knew, you'd jump to the answer, right? Uh, the second thing is we're going to be talking about actual user deployments uh, next year. As opposed to this year, there are some, and there are some very good ones. Next year, we'll be overwhelmed with them, and we'll be talking about the differences and the challenges that they face in taking them to the next generation. Is that a good overwhelmed or a bad overwhelmed? Sounds a good one. I think it's a great overwhelmed, because frankly, as, a, as an industry, we don't actually know what to put in OpenStack. We're guessing. We've got great companies, IBM and Intel, and many others that are piling on to OpenStack, but we're all guessing what the right answers are. As we engage with customers, we'll learn a whole lot more. Billy, a real pleasure talking with you. My pleasure. Thanks for talking to me. Again, Billy Cox, uh, General Manager Service Assurance Management at Intel Corporation.